the best careers for introverts. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, and career opportunities that will lead you to success. And we also talk about avoiding the common financial traps that so many people fall for. If that sounds like something that interests you, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, in order to see more content just like this. Now let's jump right into it with the first one on the list. It's gonna be number 10, which is entrepreneur. Now I have something to admit to you guys, okay? I put this one as number one for the best careers for extroverts. And I realized that I did a disservice to my introvert homies out there because I realized that introverts can do cool shit too, okay? I'm an introvert and I'm living proof that you can grow a tiny YouTube channel as an introvert. That's right, first one on the list, I've got two words for you. Entrepreneurship. Now this one was the top career for the list of the best careers for extroverts. And I was thinking to myself, I don't wanna put the same career on both lists, but there's some types of careers, sometimes the jobs out there where they're so vast, like there's so many different examples of things you can do that they really do fall under both categories and entrepreneurship is one of them. It really depends on what type of business or industry that you're trying to go into. And actually, I think that introverts have a lot of advantages over extroverts when it comes to entrepreneurship in some ways. First of all, as glamorous as movies and pop culture tries to make entrepreneurship, the reality of it is a lot of it is just going to be endless hours of grinding. So let's see what the internet's favorite meme lord slash super entrepreneur Elon Musk has to say about being an entrepreneur. It's like eating glass and staring into the abyss. The truth is introverts get energized by being alone and extroverts get energized by being around other people. That's the main distinction between the two. Extroverts tend to get lonely much more easily and that's not as much of an issue for introverts. So the endless hours of grinding that it takes to both start as well as run a business, which much of the time businesses are started by just one person, so you're just gonna be working alone a lot of the time, is not gonna be nearly as bad for an introvert as it is for an extrovert. The only thing I grind is my workload. On top of that, they can hyper-focus for extended periods of time just because of the fact that they don't have to be around other people. The grind is real. Elon Musk has a MBTI or Myers-Briggs personality test of INTJ, which means he is an introvert. Now, I think introverts Introverts can do really well as entrepreneurs, especially if they're starting a business in the right industry. And that, my friends, is how you become a successful entrepreneur. <laughs> So number nine on the list is going to be a marketer. Marketers are going to be someone who advertise or promote a product to a large audience, and they make around $63,000 a year. There's 738,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 18%, which is very good. So marketers are gonna use a lot of the same skills that you would use as a salesman, but you're gonna do it on more of a broad and scalable level. So a salesman, for instance, can only make so many sales in a day. I mean, you can only talk to so many people in a single day, but as a marketer, you can write ad copy or you could make a marketing video that millions and millions of people could see if you have the ad budget for it in a day. It's pretty much unlimited. Now, a lot of marketers are gonna start off as salespeople and then they're gonna move into marketing later on in their career. Now, again, you don't have to be an introvert to be a good marketer, but I have noticed that many marketers that are really good are introverts. Now, I know some people in the comments are gonna be like, Shane, introverts can be great salesmen too. Why are you saying this? I know, I know, I know. Okay, I'm an introvert. I get it. I've done sales since I was a teenager and I was pretty decent at it. You can definitely be a successful salesman as an introvert. In fact, I think there's some types of sales jobs that introverts might even do better in. But just generally speaking, one thing that I've noticed is a lot of the top salesmen out there tend to be extroverts and a lot of the top marketers out there tend to be a little bit more on the introverted side. Marketers are a little bit more focused on the numbers and making small changes here and there. And generally speaking, they're gonna spend less time around people that they don't know. But that's just my opinion. Number eight on the list is going to be medical doctors. And yes, this is another one where I included it on the list of the best careers for extroverts. There are so many different types of specialties that you can go into if you become a physician or a medical doctor. And there are specialties out there that are gonna be a little bit better for extroverts and some are gonna be a little bit better for introverts. So physicians, according to BLS, they make over $208,000 a year, which is kind of non-specific. There's tons of jobs available. It's growing pretty fast. Physician overall is a pretty good 
career. I made a whole video about it where I talked about how I think it's a little bit overrated, but if you know what you're getting yourself into, it can be a really good career. Now, some of the specialties that do really well for people who are introverted are going to be things like radiologist, uh, psychiatrist, pathologist, anesthesiologist would be a good one. And actually some types of surgeons do pretty well as introverts as well. So for instance, let's talk about the surgeons. Uh, on average, a surgeon will make around $395,000 a year, but it really depends on what specialty you do. It ranges all the way, generally speaking, from like $180,000 a year to some specialties make around $600,000 plus every single year as a medical doctor. And again, it depends on which specialty you do, what residencies you do, etc. A lot of the time, psychiatrists are very self-reflective. They're, they're introverted. They have good people skills, but generally speaking, that's on a one-on-one -on -one level or maybe, you know, them talking to two different people. They're not going to be having to talk to like an entire group of people usually. Same with pathologists, of course. They study different diseases and injuries. And when somebody dies, they're the ones who generally will do the autopsy. So I just wanted to put this one in there just because of the fact that I realized that, um, you know, doctors, a lot of the time they have to be extroverted just because they're constantly communicating with different people. They're constantly going to be meeting new people. But there are some types of physician specialties where you don't really have to be all that extroverted. You're going to be around the same people every day. You're not going to have to meet new people all the time. It's not going to be draining your energy like crazy. Number seven on the list is going to be actuary. So generally speaking, Speaking, actuaries will take a bunch of numbers and statistics, analyze them in order to determine the risk as well as the premiums for insurance. According to BLS, actuaries make around $108,000 a year. There's 27,000 jobs available and the job outlook is about 18%, which is really, really good. So actuary is a career where you're likely going to either work for an insurance company or the second really common path is you're gonna work as a consultant. With an insurance company, you'll make pretty good money, you're gonna have pretty good job satisfaction. Now, one thing about being an actuary is there is a ton of tests that you have to take, and most of the time when you pass those tests, you're gonna be making a little bit more money, so that's a good thing in some ways, but these tests are actually extremely difficult. Over 50% of the people who take them generally do not pass, so they're designed to be unbelievably difficult, and it seems like there's just an endless amount of tests that you have to pass. So it's almost like going back to school all over again. You're going to have your normal, you know, 40 hours a week job, and then you're going to be studying for these tests pretty much constantly. That's great if you're somebody that constantly wants to be learning and you really like studying, but it can be really annoying for somebody who kind of just wants to live a normal life. Consulting, on the other hand, is more about knowing what you're doing in a very niche subject. This one is going to be a little bit more social, so might not be as good for introverts. You're going to be interacting with a ton of people. You're going to be talking to clients. But basically what you are is a knowledge salesman. That's just the easiest way to put it. Your clients are generally going to be people from really big companies who have a lot of money and they want you to solve a very specific problem for them or they want you to analyze some data or present data that you already have for them. Number six on the list is going to be software development. Hmm, this one keeps on popping up on like every list I do. Also known as a coder, this is going to be someone who's going to create software for computers. Now, software developers on average, according to BLS, are going to make $107,000 a year. There's 1.4 million jobs available and it's growing at 22%, which is insane. This is one of the best possible careers out there and I can only see it getting better in the future. There's no way this one's going to be automated. In fact, you're going to be the person who's automating things. This is one of my highest recommended careers, whether you're you're going at it from the aspect of getting a college degree, like a computer science degree, and then going into software development. Or if you're somebody who maybe got a degree that is like math related or something like that, and you're not really liking your job, you can move into software development. Or if you're somebody who has no experience at all, you can still learn this stuff and then, you know, get an entry level job, work your way up. Pretty much no matter what position you're in, this is a really good career to get into. Now, software developers, of course, are going to sit in front of their computers for many, many hours a day. Many of them will have limited contact with other people throughout the day and generally you're going to talk with your team through an app like Slack or something along those lines. And the people that you do talk to are probably going to be people that you interact with all the time. So you're not going to have to go and meet new people, you know, every single day. It'll be a pretty rare occurrence. And many of them, especially nowadays with the current pandemic that's happening, do a lot of remote coding. And so they don't even have to go into an office. They're basically just coding from home. Sure, many of them will be working in an office setting where maybe you're around other people quite a bit, 
but they're not going to have to be like a salesman, for instance, where you're constantly meeting new people. I don't know about you guys, but for me as an introvert, spending time around people that I already know really well doesn't suck up as much of my energy as when I have to go and meet a bunch of new people. That's what really makes me tired. Now, one thing about introverts is a lot of the time they're actually really good at communicating, just they don't wanna have to do it face to face, they prefer to do it at a distance. And then another thing that I've noticed is people who are introverted don't necessarily have to have as much human contact because of the fact that they get energy just by being alone. And so they're a little bit better in many cases at just grinding away for hours, you know, doing something like a coding bench. Number five on the list, List is going to be truck drivers. So this is a person who earns a living driving trucks and this could be all kinds of different trucks but a lot of the time it's going to be semis. Now this is a job where you can do a lot of different things you know some people are going to be driving huge loads all the way across the country others are just going to be driving the trucks around locally so that they can get home to their families every night. Some own their own truck and they're basically like contractors they tend to make a little bit more money. Others are going to work for a big company who already has trucks. There's a ton of different variations here but in my opinion, this is one of the better careers that you can get into with very little training. Now, according to BLS, the average truck driver is gonna make around $45,000 a year. There's 2 million jobs available and it's growing at 2%, which is a little bit slower than average. Now, I happen to think that these numbers are pretty low just because of the fact that a lot of drivers just do part-time, you know, they'll do it during part of the year and then the other part of the year they do something else. I'm not sure how they did their methodology on this, but just from personal experience, knowing people who drive trucks, we're talking like the big semis, they make a lot more than 45,000 a year. Now the cool thing about driving a truck, driving a semi, is you can basically get trained in like a month or two and you're good to go. Now, like I said before, there's tons of different types of trucks out there. You've got dry van, refrigerator van, uh, tankers that hold gas, flatbed, uh, dump truck drivers. There's all kinds of different options out there and the pay is going to vary based on which one you do. Now, in order to make really good money as a truck driver, and this is similar to just about any career out there, you look at doctors, for instance, you look at pharmacists, you look at engineers, business people, just about any career out there. In order to make more money, you want to specialize in something, okay? Specialists tend to make more money, they tend to have better job satisfaction and just be overall happier than generalists. Now, one thing about truck driving that really isn't mentioned all that much is it can be especially good for you if you're young and single. Now, of course, the obvious reason for this is that if you have a family and you're truck driving all the way across the country, you're probably not gonna be able to see them very often. But a not so obvious reason is the fact that if you're not living with anyone else, if you're single, you can actually just live in the truck. You don't necessarily have to pay rent or buy a car. You can just live in the truck. That's a huge cost savings because rent and vehicle expenses are generally going to be your two biggest expenses in your life. So if you're young, you don't have too many obligations. What you can do is you can become a truck driver, specialize in something, and you can be making over $80,000 a year just a few years after high school. And that's $80,000 that you can pretty much just bank. You don't have to worry about paying $1,000 for rent or $300 a month on a car payment. You get to bank most of that money. This is a great career for introverts as well just because of the fact that you're probably going to be spending a lot of time just by yourself driving down the highway. Number four on the list is going to be an IT manager. So IT managers are going to take care of all the information technology needs within a business generally. So one career they could get into would be a computer and information systems manager. They make around $146,000 a year. There's 461,000 jobs available and it's growing at 10% which is really good. So I talked about in the extrovert video how becoming a manager is going to be a great position for extroverts to get into and I realized that again that's not really fair because in many cases introverts can make good managers as well. Sure I think most managers are going to be more on the extroverted side. This is a good example of a position where you can be an introvert and be a very effective manager as well. A lot of IT guys are going to spend most of the day working with technology. They're not going to have too much human interaction. They'll probably interact with the other IT guys. They're going to answer the phone once in a while but they're not going to be meeting new people all the time. IT managers are gonna have a little bit more human interaction than your average IT guy. However, the most important thing about being an IT manager is your technical expertise. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You're probably gonna be working around a bunch of geeks, which creates its own challenges. But overall, geeks aren't that hard to work with if you know what you're doing. Too much communication is generally not gonna be that much of a problem. If anything, you'll want to encourage them to communicate more. Number three on the list is going to be accountant. Accountants are gonna be the people that prepare and examine all kinds of different financial records, anywhere from tax 
taxes to basically just running the books on a business. Now, according to BLS, accountants and auditors make around $71,000 a year. There's 1.4 million jobs available and it's growing at 4%, which is about average. Now, this is a very common job out there. And because of that, there's gonna be a ton of different types of accountants. Now, with most accounting jobs, there's obviously gonna be a lot of number crunching, of course. And when most people think of accounting, they probably think of Excel sheets and taxes, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. There's a ton of different specialties within accounting and there's jobs out there for accountants in just about every industry and in every business. Basically, everywhere you look, there's gonna be jobs for accountants. So if you go into accounting, you get tired of staring at an Excel sheet, you can do a ton of different things. In the same vein, professions like this where there's a ton of different options out there, I tend to like these just because of the fact that, like let's say you made a really good plan, you knew what you were getting into, but then you know you get a few years into it and you're like, you know what? I don't really like this that much. I thought I was gonna like it, but for some reason it's just not for me. Well, if you're an accountant for instance, there are so many different options that you can go into. Now, a lot of accountants will start off working for one of the big four accounting firms, and they're gonna specialize in something and move towards that. Another great thing about accounting is it's very flexible. So let's say that you want to move up the chain in a company, you wanna to try to become the CEO. Well, guess what? There's a lot of examples of accountants that move all the way up to executive positions. Accounting is also one of the degrees that has created the most millionaires. I did the video where I talked about careers and degrees that create the most millionaires or lead to people becoming millionaires, accounting was one of the highest ones on that list. If you go the tax route, for instance, a lot of the time accounting will be very seasonal where you're gonna be extremely busy six months out of the year and then the other six months aren't gonna be that bad. Let's say you absolutely hate number crunching, you never wanna look at an Excel sheet, you never wanna look at taxes again, guess what? You can move into becoming like a recruiter or something like that just because of the fact that there's so many people out there that do accounting, you could go to one of the big four firms and you could become an accountant recruiter. I think you guys get the idea, very flexible career, doesn't matter whether you're an introvert, an extrovert, you're gonna find something within the career that works for you. Number two on the list is going to be data scientist. Now this is one that a lot of people in my comments section always talk about. They wanted me to talk about data scientists more and I'll probably make uh, an entire video on it at some point in the future. So basically what data scientists do in layman's terms is they get a bunch of crap data and they sort that data out and make something useful out of it. They can use that data in such a way that they will help business is to make good business decisions that will lead to them being more successful and making more money. So one example of a data scientist related career that you could go into would be a computer and information research scientist. They make around $122,000 a year. There's 32,000 jobs available and it's growing at 15%, which is much faster than average. So data science is very similar to software development, but there's gonna be more of an emphasis on business as well as math and statistics. This is usually gonna be data that has something to do with either sales or marketing. This is another subject, another career that combines business skills with technology skills, which is always a killer combination. Now, number one on the list, and this is a relatively new development since this amazing pandemic that we're all experiencing right now. Number one is going to be the remote version of your current job. With the current situation that's happening right now throughout the entire world, it's become more and more obvious that a lot of people can do the same job that they used to do in the office from home. For this reason, I predict that even after the pandemic is open, it's going to be more and more common to see people doing their jobs that they used to do in the office remotely. Now, some of them will do the job completely remotely, like they'll pretty much never go into the office. You can basically like travel around the world, for instance. Others will do it partially remotely where maybe you go into the office two, three days a week and then you're at home two or three days a week. Now, you'd be really surprised at how many different remote opportunities are out there, especially after all this stuff happened. You might think that there's no way my current job can be done remotely. So let's take pharmacy, for instance. I'm a pharmacist. What people picture in their head, like the average person when they see a pharmacist, is someone who is in a grocery store who gives them their antibiotics. No way they could do that remotely, right? They have to be there to counsel the patient. They've gotta make sure that the right stuff is in the bottle and all that, right? Actually, there are a ton of opportunities to work remotely in pharmacy. The clinical and the data verification side of pharmacy can actually be done remotely. And that's in retail, of course, but also in 
hospitals and different clinical settings. So sure, you'd probably have to change up your career a little bit. You might be able to do a slightly different career within the same company, or maybe you have to move to a slightly different specialty, something along those lines within the same company or maybe within the same industry. But the big point here is there are a lot of opportunities for remote jobs and I think it's gonna be even more common in the future. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And before you go, make sure to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.